Hey runners, just another running coach here. We're closing in on the end of the year, so today I thought it might be helpful to make a video about New Year's resolutions. Not just as they relate to running, but in a sense, fitness, and in general. Now, if you're watching this, chances are you either already have some goals in mind for the new year, or you're someone who's very new to running and you might not even be sure how to set your running goals yet. And either way, that's all right. I'm gonna share some tips that I think can be helpful. Obviously, it goes without saying that everybody's different, everybody's motivations, or sparks as I like to call them are different, our methods are different, our lifestyles are different, our limitations are different. Uh, and we have no idea what the new year will look like, so keep in mind that this is general advice, take what you think will work for you, and run with that, pun intended. In general, New Year's resolutions can be kind of sticky territory for lots of people. In theory, they're a nice idea. It can be great to self-reflect, look ahead into the future, and strive to be the best version of ourselves. But in practice, a lot of resolutions are thrust upon us by subliminal messaging in advertising, other people's expectations of who we are and who we should be, and because there's just so much noise around what goals we should set and how to follow through on them, a lot are abandoned pretty early on in the year and it usually just makes us feel worse and more likely to buy into whatever solution is marketed to us next. So my number one tip for setting your New Year's resolution is make your resolution your own. Easiest way to do that is take a piece of paper and a pen, write down a potential resolution and underneath it, create a T-chart on one side list reasons why you want this to be your resolution, think about the ways that you'll benefit from keeping it, and on the other, try to be honest and list those other influences that might be coming into play. Once you're done, it should be more clear if it's something that really matters to you or if it's something you'd be doing just for the approval of others. It's not always gonna be clear cut, but it'll give you a better idea, and if it turns out your potential resolution was someone else's idea, it always feels great to throw that paper in the trash. Now, if you don't even know where to begin, you can skip the resolution part and just start writing down things that make you happy and things that currently make you feel unhappy. And as long as you're using your own feelings as your guide, you'll have a great starting point. Now, let's talk about how to set the best kind of resolution, something that's measurable and something you'll enjoy achieving in the process. One of my favorite philosophies in life is that living for the journey is far more satisfying than fixating on the destination. We see this everywhere in pop culture, film, literature, in our everyday lives. All of those fear-mongering articles about people on their deathbed saying their only regret in life was that they didn't live in the moment. Um, you know, a very common debate is do we work a job that we hate for our whole lives just so we can retire comfortably? or can we work a job we enjoy, may not have a clear sense of what the future holds, but in the meantime, we feel a sense of fulfillment and grow as people in the process, which is kind of the whole point of New Year's resolutions, if you ask me. So, as an example, let's say I was writing my little T-chart, and I know that being social makes me happy, and the lack of social activity in my life due to the pandemic, or for any other reason, is something I'm currently unhappy about. How do we quantify that? Well, let's say that based on what I know about myself, I need at least two meaningful social interactions per week to feel happier. Maybe that's running with a friend, maybe that's getting together with a group of friends for a game night, maybe it's just a phone call. Doesn't need to be that specific. Based on that, I make it my goal to have one social activity during the week and one during the weekend. This means that by the end of the year, I'll have had 104 meaningful social interactions, not counting time spent with my family, significant other, doing hobbies I enjoy, working, etc. That's a life pretty well lived by today's standards. Obviously, it might sound a little funny to think of being social as something to check off a to-do list, but again, the main incentive here is not to put a bunch of green check marks on your calendar, as satisfying as that can be, it's the journey of having fun, rewarding times with friends that will keep you going. It's not disrespectful in any way to those you're spending time with. 
It's just how you're choosing to keep your life in order. No shame in that. Pivoting back to running and fitness, setting appropriate fitness resolutions can be very difficult. Not because they're inherently difficult goals, but more because of the incredibly toxic discourse and expectations thrust upon us by the fitness industry as a whole. I think we can all agree that, especially around New Year's, the fitness industry is relentless in telling us how much weight we need to lose to be healthy, how much more we should be exercising in a gym or with some overpriced gimmicky gadget, and how much easier it'll be to keep our resolutions this year if only we pay for some fancy revolutionary subscription or membership. Total garbage. Most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, but most of the time these companies making these types of promises and creating these sky high expectations are only doing so to prey upon the self-conscious and somehow link attractiveness and self-worth with physical fitness and appearance. That's plenty unethical by itself, but to make them even scummier, once they have your money, they actually have no incentive to see that you actually meet your goals because they figured out that when we don't, we tend to blame it on ourselves, remember results may vary, yet we still come back to spend, you guessed it, more money. Again, I'm not saying this is true of all gyms, weight loss programs, or trainers. I know a lot of people out there who are honest, genuinely passionate about what they do and are great at what they do. What I'm talking about are the commercials and targeted ads were served ad nauseum, no pun intended, as we're scrolling and channel surfing. As a general rule of thumb, if a fitness company has really well-produced commercials or they're able to afford lots of ad space, it's a sign that their priorities are more in marketing than the services they provide. So I think this was just my roundabout way of saying if you're setting fitness related resolutions that are quantifiable and fun, it's even more important than usual to make sure your expectations are realistic. Take what you hear and see from commercials and influencers with a very healthy dose of skepticism and only spend money on what you truly believe will be of value to you and or contribute to the fun factor. And by the way, that can be something totally silly and unconventional. This year, one of my resolutions is to do two different types of cross training per week. And one of those is almost certainly going to be Ring Fit Adventure on the Nintendo Switch. Why? Because it makes me sweat. It makes it fun to do exercises I wouldn't normally have the discipline to do. And it's freaking awesome. Not an endorsement of Ring Fit Adventure, but just saying, that's what I'll be doing. Ranting and raving aside, here are a few last helpful tips as you set your New Year's resolutions, fitness or not. One, allow yourself a runway to reach certain types of goals. For example, if you wanna run 50 miles per week every week of the year, but you've never even run a 30 mile week, maybe adjust your goal to running 50 miles per week by sometime later in the year so you have more time to gradually build up. Two, try to avoid make or break goals that hinge on a single event. For example, if you have a time goal on a marathon, that's a very admirable type of goal. But I wouldn't necessarily make it your whole New Year's resolution because A, if you don't make it, that'll be a real bummer, and B, there are many ways to skin that cat, so it doesn't necessarily help you define the type of training or habits you'll want to adopt in order to help you achieve that goal. In this case, I would keep the overall goal, but maybe the resolution is training related or has nothing to do with running at all. Three, try to avoid setting an everyday goal. This is the fastest way to take anything, even something you absolutely love to do, and turn it into something you despise. I can almost guarantee it. Ideally, you wanna feel like making excuses to follow through on your resolution, not to avoid it. And when you force yourself to do something every single day, the exception being abstaining from things like substance abuse for those recovering from addiction, it becomes really difficult to find the resolve and maintain the joy. For example, even if you're capable of running every day, you might wanna consider you're giving yourself a day off every now and again, or at least one day where you're just running one mile to maintain your streak for you streakers out there. Last but not least, and this is a bit of a silly one, but hear me out, 
If you use a calendar to track your progress, check marks are okay, but abolish the red X. Here's what I mean. There's a tendency for some to gamify their New Year's resolution by giving themselves a green check when they keep up with the routine and a red X when they don't. Almost like giving yourself a big F on your exam. Somehow we've been conditioned to think that the red X will motivate us to work harder so we can avoid it in the future. But in reality, I find it unnecessarily demoralizing. It makes it easier to fixate on our failures rather than our successes, which kind of defeats the purpose. And drawing a red X doesn't even tell us anything about why we didn't follow through. It's one of the easiest overlooked ways to self-sabotage, in my opinion. Here's what I recommend instead. Take a blue Sharpie, and instead of drawing an X, draw a circle around the date on your calendar, and keep a journal of what prevented you from keeping your routine that day. This way, you'll have a record that you can go back to and learn from, and you won't have an offensive red X shaming you when you look at your calendar. That's all for now. I wish you all a happy and healthy new year. 2021 may not have been the greatest year in recent memory, but it was a lot better than 2020. It's been a pleasure being able to coach, run races again, make these videos, and help runners through the interwebs. Speaking of which, I am running a New Year's promotion for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, custom training plans, and standard training plans. You can use the coupon code in the video description for a 20% discount off of anything. The three standard training plans that I currently offer are great for those who are interested in just getting into running for the first time. Uh, they use the run-walk method, and they're a fraction of the cost of my other offerings. So check that out if you're interested. And despite my generalizations about the fitness industry earlier, I can say that, you know, in terms of myself, I'm a super passionate runner. I really do care and I really would be excited to work with you and help you achieve your running goals in 2022. So if you're interested or you know someone else who might be interested in a coach or a training plan, feel free to reach out. Until next time, Happy New Year.